Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am the Taylorette for those of you who do not know who I am. Today I will be talking about mannequins. So I have eight mannequins total and you're probably wondering why do you need eight mannequins if you're only working on one project at a time? Well today I will be answering that question for you. I have five adjustable mannequins and three vintage mannequins and I will tell you each one has a completely different purpose and they're totally random in preference but I will tell you why I prefer each one individually and they all have names so I will introduce them by name to you as well this is Bernadette how she got that name I have no idea she's had that name for about 10 years she is my favorite mannequin actually or she has been until I purchased another one recently I love her because she has dials instead of a keyhole it's just a lot more secure a lot easier to adjust that way and you can just put your finger at it you don't have to have an extra tool to change her measurements the only thing that I am very sad about is she is slightly broken so this should be all the way up here she tends to sag down here and I have to kind of push her up a little bit when I'm doing like a Civil War dress that's not Regency and this one I don't have a name for her poor thing she is newer this one is also operated off of a Keyhole. I do not like keyholes, but these large mannequins, I, I don't think I was able to find a good deal in one of these large mannequins. And I don't use her as much as I do my other ones. This is more of a true plus size mannequin. Take this off for a minute. You put a little key in there. And what I cannot stand about them is when you put the key in there, it's so hard to twist it. It's just, and this thing is so weak. When you twist it, it breaks off. I have three of these and they all came with two keys. And this is my last one because I broke them all. I would highly recommend if you were to get an adjustable mannequin, please get the dial. It's almost impossible to make it bigger without the key. It's really annoying. This one also does not have a name because this one is new as well. I think part of the reason why I haven't named these because if I name them something I really love and say if someday I have kids that I like those names, I don't want my mannequin to be the same name as my kid, right? You know, that would be kind of weird. So if you have names for these mannequins, feel free to shoot out some names. This one is pretty much the same as Bernadette, although this one does go half an inch smaller than my other one. She is dials. I love that she's a dial. That just makes me so happy. Yeah, and currently I'm working on an 18th, cent 18th century dress right now. Introducing Frances. She is my petite mannequin, although she is broken as well. It's supposed to be sitting up here somewhere. What I do not like about this mannequin, this is a petite mannequin, you need to look out for this if you are buying a petite mannequin, is they come hunched. I hate that because in historical costuming, sitting up straight is a thing. I believe she's from a bus 28 to a 34, I think. I'm pretty sure that that's the measurements for her. And here we have Mavis. This is considered medium, whereas the other plus size that's considered large, I believe, and then Francis is considered petite. So yeah, this is Mavis. She served me very well. This mannequin, it's pretty good for being a keyhole. And uh, here is Manly. I haven't used him as much. I hope to make an 18th century jacket of some sort for him. He serves a purpose right now. He holds all my, my measuring tapes. And here we have Edna Mode. Yeah, you can probably guess from Incredibles, you know, the short dressmaker. And back here, we have Girly. She currently stays back here because she has a very heavy, heavy platter at the bottom. She's older. She is, let's see, 1969. So one of the biggest questions you're probably asking yourself right now is how can you fit a historical garment to something that is not shaped that has a corset on it? Well, that is a good question. However, I will say I do not like to model my dresses on these mannequins if I don't have to. If you have the measurements correct on the mannequin, you have the bust size and the waist size done. That generally gives you an idea of what you need to know about the shape of the dress and then wear the dress on a corset so that it gives more of the silhouette that you're looking for. So I haven't really run into that problem. The only thing is the underbust. 
it's not very distinct. It's not like most human bodies where it goes down and straight. The measurement completely shrinks right here. It's more of a gradual curve right here. And so you don't, the under bust measurement, especially for Regency dresses, that can be kind of frustrating because if you're trying to model the dress on there, it won't button at the bottom hole in the back if you have a small under bust measurement. Same problem with this one. It's the bust is gradual. But if you have that in mind, if you're using one of these mannequins, all you have to do is just go, okay, I know it's not gonna button at the bottom button at the under bust. Then if you get used to that, it really is not a problem. Sometimes if I'm using one of these mannequins, I will actually take some batting and stick it. If someone has measurements somewhere that's a little bit odd, like maybe extra wide hips, or if they have a belly, I'll add a belly with the padding so that I can get an idea of what the dress is going to look like over someone who has that shape. Please let me know if you have any questions or things that were a little bit unclear. I know when I first bought my mannequin I had no idea what I was looking for. And especially adjustable. Adjustable can sound cheap but they actually do serve a really great purpose and they help me to wrap my brain around somebody's size. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and please subscribe and like this video.